Hello everyone, welcome to a module on Media Policies and Law. I am Pragati Paul, Assistant Professor, Development Communication at Anwar Jamal Kidwai Mass Communication Research Center, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The objectives of the module are to highlight the importance and need for media law and policies, to enable the learners with familiarity with the history of media laws, to sensitize the listeners about the ethical consideration for the journalists, to highlight various media laws in context to print, radio, broadcast, television, etc. Media acts as a regulator and plays an important role in the iteration of public view. It is an instrument which helps in networking between the people, political parties and the government of the country. The statement of the media over the specific matters plays an imperative role in setting magnitudes for the particular state policies and their application. In this way, it enables the smooth functioning of the entire democratic system. The mass media holds an intrinsic part in everyday's lives and the people are familiar to radio broadcasting, television news, newspaper, traditional media, and now social media as well. The potentials of news broadcasting rise and the scope of media impact expand as a practice of communication. Media laws and policies becomes an increasingly significant issues in the society. Through communication, a human being expresses his opinions, ideas, and feelings to others. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. The right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek and receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers, declares the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948. Article 191A of the Indian Constitution states, all citizens have the right to freedom of speech and expression. Freedom of speech and expression means the right to express one's convictions and opinions freely by words of mouth, writing, printing, pictures or any other mode. It thus embraces the expression of one's idea through any communicable medium or visible representation, such as gestures and signs. It supports an individual to achieve self-fulfillment and helps in the discovery of truth. It motivates and helps an individual to participate in decision-making actively and provides an instrument to create a realistic balance between social change and stability. The individuals of the society would be able to practice their own thoughts, ideas, connect them liberally to the community people. Freedom of speech and expression is the mother of all liberties and the most essential form of freedom of speech and expression is the freedom of the press. Freedom of the press allows individuals to express their views and opinions in a democratic setup. The dissenting voices are valued in the system as the voices permitted the system to reach the truth leading to accuracy, transparency and clarity of the content. Milton has articulated his view in Areopagitica, focusing on the libertarian thought which had its origin in writing. The philosophical support was found in the writings of John Stuart Mill, focusing on liberty. He states, the peculiar evil of silencing the expression of an opinion is that it is robbing the human race. Posterity as well the existing generation, those who dissent from the opinion, even more than those who hold it. If the opinion is right, they are deprived of the opportunity of exchanging error for truth. If wrong, they lose what almost as great a benefit is. The clear perception and impression of truth produced by its collision with error. Article 19 of the Indian Constitution states, All citizens shall have the right to freedom of speech and expression, to assemble peaceably and without arms, to form associations or unions, to move freely throughout the territory of India, 
to reside in any part of the territory of India, to acquire, hold and dispose of property and to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or business. However, the right to freedom of speech and expression shall not affect the operation of any existing law or prevent the state from making any law insofar as such law imposes reasonable restriction on the exercise of that right in the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of India. The security of the state, friendly relations with foreign states, public decency or morality, or concerning contempt of court, defamation or incitement to offence. The first press commission of India was set up in 1952. It was set up to inquire about the state of the press in India after independence. Under the chairmanship of Justice S. Raj Adhiksha, it was constituted by the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. After inquiring into the ownership, management and financial structure of the press, as well as other aspects of the newspaper industry in the country, at that time, it submitted its report in 1954. The aim was to study the growth in the media, which may incline forward awareness or monopoly and provide suggestive remedies. The emphasis was to inspire the sense of responsibility and public service among those involved in the career of mass media and journalism. The objective of the Press Commission of India was to maintain the freedom of the press and support the press to sustain its autonomy. The aim was to contempt objectionable kinds of journalistic behavior and builds up a code under the highest professional standards. Let's discuss the historical perspectives of media law. The freedom for media is derived from Article 191A and the article guarantees freedom of speech and expression. Our constitution also lays down some restrictions in the form of Article 192. Regarding the issues of freedom of speech, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar described the position as follows. The press or the mass media has no special right which are not to be given to or which are not to be exercised by the citizen in his capacity. Various media laws and policies regulate the act of media in India. Laws and policies related to the print and electronic media have been there since the inception. During pre-independence, several laws allied to media were passed and in the post-independence time, many more media laws were endorsed in context to broadcasting. Some of the imperative media laws are listed below. Press and Registration of Book Act 1867 is the oldest law which is related to the press and still existing in India. The Act aims to enable the government to regulate the printing press and newspapers in India. The Act was known for the protection of the book copies and newspapers and registration of printing media and newspapers. The Act has gone under several minor amendments to accomplish the need of the changing situation in the society. However, recognized on the recommendation of the first press commission in 1953, a most important amendment was made in the Act which formed the Office of the Registrar of Newspaper of India and put down its various duties, tasks and purposes. The functioning of this Act started in 1956. It includes the particular to be printed on the books and papers. It also caters to the publication rules and includes the keeper of the printing press to make certain declaration. Indian Penal Code 1862 provides that a book, pamphlet, paper writing, drawing, painting, representations, figures or any other object shall be deemed to be obscene if it is lascivious or appeals to purient interest or if its effect is such as to tend to deprave and corrupt persons who are likely having regard to all relevant circumstances to read, see or hear the message contained or embodied in it. 
Working Journalist Act is based on the commendation of the first press commission, which gave journalists the identity of an employee and brought them under the scope of the Industrial Dispute Act 1947. The Act has put forward a specific definition of a journalist along with deciding the terms of their service. It provides for the formation of wage boards for them from time to time. Through this Act, the state states that publishing a newspaper and running a news agency is an industry of high repute. Thus, the laws made for ordinary workers do not apply to them as the nature conditions and environment of their work is different. It deals with the job timings, hours of work and payment. It makes one day off per one working week compulsory along with providing for medical and emergency leaves. Separate wage boards are formed from time to time for journalists and non-journalist employees. Copyright Act 1957 According to Section 14 of the Act, Copyright means the exclusive right subject to the provision of this act. It is the right to copy or duplicate the work for which the writer has got the copyright. In the 20th century, the origin of the copyright took place in the form of intellectual property, dealing with guarding the rights of the copyright holder. It can be sold, sealed or mortgaged just like any other intellectual properties. The main objective of the Copyright Act is to inspire and motivate the authors to create their original work by granting them exclusive rights. The subject matter of the copyright includes cinematography, artistic creation, musical work, dramatic work, literary, computer programs and sound recordings. It also helps in protecting the rights of the person who holds the copyright and also gives civil and criminal remedies to the copyright holder in case of infringement. The copyright registration plays an important role in helping the authors to take immediate legal action against the violation. The registration certificate allows the authors to create their titles in the situation of a dispute. Under this act, the government charges and collects the royalty and pays the same to the copyright holder. The rights of a copyright holder includes the right to reproduce, right to grant a license, right to assign, right to issue new copies of the work, right to pursue a legal remedy in case of infringement, right to have copyright for a fixed term, and right to communicate to the public. The person involved in copyright prepares an application on a prescribed form to the registrar and on accepting the application, the registrar conducts the inquiry. Mm -hmm.